So I thought at this stage it was quite helpful maybe to give a feel for the kinds of things software packages are going to throw at you when you, you manage to get the coding right or select from the menus how to do your tests. You've got the data in the right places. Because in my view, a lot of the packages, um, the output isn't very easy to read and they tend to give things that you, you don't need or they haven't explained properly. So I'll just show the output in a couple of packages that you'd get from doing a t-test. So this is Minitab, this is quite a straightforward package to learn and one you might want to think about if you're just doing basic statistical analyses. So if we put that data on the calves into the, the t-test in Minitab, this is what it gives us. It gives us the means, so if you haven't already got those, that's quite helpful to have the means, the standard deviation and the standard error. This line's not very helpful. It just tells us that the difference is going to be mu1 minus mu2. You might not, you might think, well, what's mu1, mu2? It doesn't tell us, but it, Minitab has this habit of giving phonetic interpretations of Greek symbols, um, so this is meant to be mu, which people sometimes use to de denote means. So that's not, not really very helpful, but it's saying the estimate for the difference, which is actually what we're talking about up there, minus 8.2. Five, which is the difference in the means, gives us a confidence interval. So if you remember from last week, that's the interval within which we expect that difference to lie 95% of the time. So we're 95% confident that the difference will be in that region. Tells us what we're testing, that the difference is equal to zero. Gives us the t-statistic that we've had before. And what you really want out of this analysis is the p-value. So it's actually approximated that by zero, although I would personally never like to give a p-value as zero. I always say it's smaller than a very small number like 0 0.001. This is really just to say you get all this stuff, but don't feel you've got to understand every line of it. Um, it's really the p-value you're after when doing this test. An equivalent analysis in another package called SAS is different again. Again, it gives us the mean values and measure of their accuracy by the standard error. It repeats that and then goes on to give us the differences, which again is going to be eight point, minus 8.95 between the groups. SAS actually gives an option of either working with equal variances for the two groups or unequal, whereas Minitab actually just used unequal variances. There's two slightly different t-values if you use equal variances, so you would pool these standard errors and get a common one. The t-statistics slightly different and the p-value is actually going to be a bit bigger. And it goes on to test the equality of the variances down here and says that the, you know, there's a significant, this is the p-value, a significant difference between the variances of the groups so it was appropriate to use this second one. A lot of information in this, and, but again, the only thing you're really interested in is the p-value, unless you've got concerns about whether you know, the variance being different or not different between the groups. I think probably it's more conventional to use this unequal one, and that's what Minitab has done. So if in doubt, take the second one that uh, you'll have seen in the Minitab output there was only one p-value anyway. So don't get distracted by understanding every line that you're given in the um, output from your packages. <coughs> uh, one thing that you probably might have wondered about is this degrees of freedom that pops up in the output. That relates to the t-distribution and the fact that uh, given the size of your data set, the distribution is going to be slightly different, have a slightly different shape. In fact, don't worry about understanding this if it's um, beginning to all sound a bit much. But um, if you, you know, had wondered about the de degrees of freedom that pops up in the analysis, I mean, the package will calculate it automatically. But it's related to the sample size. So in our case, it's going to be the sum of the two samples minus two, that degrees of freedom is going to dictate what's the exact shape of the, dist the null distribution. So 
think you can see the, the black line is if you've got a very large degrees of freedom, it's going to have a, a sort of taller distribution. And then for smaller degrees of freedom, where you've got smaller sample sizes, it's going to be a little bit wider and that will affect your p-value a bit. So it's going to give you basically a more accurate p-value if you get the right degrees of freedom. If you've got a very large data set, then what you will find is your degrees of freedom is approaching this kind of light black line where it's infinite, and that's in fact the normal distribution. So the t-distribution is just a slight variation from the normal distribution. And if you ever come across things called z-tests in the literature, that's basically a t-test, but with an infinite degrees of freedom, so very similar to a t-test. The z-test is going to be based on the normal distribution.